Hey, it's Jeff. Welcome back to another video. Today, I'm going to show you how to bottom water a house plant and some situations where you might choose this over traditional watering from the top down and just some pros and cons. I have a few examples that I'm going to show you guys, so let's get into it. I think the concept of bottom watering is pretty straightforward. You find a container, fill it up with some water, place your plant in there, let the soil and roots kind of wick up as much water as they need. But I think the main two advantages uh, from bottom watering over traditional uh, top-down watering is for uh, number one, pest control. If you've had, or if you have house plants, you've probably at some point noticed those uh, little pesky flies uh, flying around. Those are fungus gnats. Moist soil on top is, uh, is a breeding ground for those little fungus gnats. So if you bottom water, uh, you can leave the top of the soil to dry out and that just reduces fungus gnats over the long term. Basically, it doesn't provide them that uh, environment where they need uh, to breed. Uh, so it basically reduces fungus gnats over time. The second advantage is for stronger root growth and development. Um, basically, as you know, all the roots are at the bottom of the pot or they search out down into the soil. So if you uh, bottom water, that allows or trains those roots to search out into the soil, uh, allowing for stronger, healthier roots. So those are the main two reasons as to why you'd want to bottom water over traditional uh, top water. So now I'm not saying that you should stop uh, top watering by any means because uh, if I'm being honest, I only bottom water a couple of my house plants, one of them being this uh, peperomia. I've noticed that uh, peperomia, they don't like to stay in any sort of wet, soggy soil, but they don't like to be top watered, in my opinion, because they have very thin, kind of fleshy uh, stems. Those rot really easy, so I only ever bottom water my peperomias, and the way I do it is I'll just uh, keep it in its little saucer. I just watered this one recently, so I'm not gonna give it much, but I just pour water into the saucer and let it kind of soak up um, through the terracotta and through the bottom of the drain hole. That allows the uh, moisture to stay at the bottom of the pot and doesn't allow the soil at the top here to uh, remain wet because I've had a number of leaves basically rot off before. So I, I bottom water my peperomias as well as my orchids. I will uh, submerge the, uh, the pot in the soil. The reason why I do my orchids is because orchids don't like any water on the leaves. There's other plants out there that uh, are the same as well. They'll basically get um, like fungus on the leaves. So there are a few plants that would prefer bottom watering over top watering. For the majority of my house plants, I still top water, but like I said, for my peperomias and orchids, I will exclusively bottom water with those guys. This is my Syngonium Chia Pens. It is absolutely bone dry. The pot is really light. The soil is really dry as well. So this needs a good thorough soaking. If you ever find when you top water a house plant and the water basically just instantly drains out, most likely it's just draining through the sides of the pot. The soil is really compact or condensed that it isn't actually soaking up. Um, or I guess retaining that soil moisture. So that's another good reason as uh, to why you may want to bottom water if the plant just needs to sit in water for a while just to kind of soak it up and just loosen up that really um, uh, dense soil. So I typically place my plant in a container first and then I will add water and I'm not gonna add it like to the, whoops, to the top of this pot. I'm just gonna add a few centimeters of water in the bottom of this one so the water level is probably only maybe an inch. Let's put a little bit more in. Just something like that. And I will let this soak for about 10 minutes or so. So you can see the water level is about an inch. I'll pull the pot out here in about 10 minutes and we'll see where the water or the moisture level is on the side of the pot. We'll let that soak and we'll check back. Another advantage to this method is basically you can't overwater this plant unless you like fill up the entire container and then just forget about it and completely saturate the soil. But this is a really easy way if you are a heavy waterer um, just to pay attention to the soil and you can limit the amount of water that your plant gets. Just uh, like I said, fill it up to a certain level and just let that soak up, take it out, let it drain and you're basically done. If you have a larger, say like Tupperware container and you have a bunch of small little pots like this, you can put all those smaller pots in that Tupperware container, fill the water level to a certain height and then just let them soak up um, instead of doing it one by one. So that's kind of one of the uh, disadvantages of this method is it basically takes time. So if, unless you have like a larger container, but 
or multiple containers, I guess, but it does take time for each plant to kind of soak it up sufficient enough to that it, uh, it remains uh, wet at the bottom or it's properly watered, I guess. I have this smaller bird's nest sansevieria that is absolutely bone dry. I just keep it in this uh, plastic nursery pot just in the terracotta, just strictly for looks. I'm gonna take it out of the nursery pot here just so you can see the soil is absolutely bone dry. So I'm going to bottom water this because it needs to soak up all that water and kind of rehydrate the soil. So I'm going to fill this one up just basically to the bottom of this saucer. I'm going to set this aside as well and let that soak up for probably about 10-15 minutes and we'll see where the moisture level or moisture line ends up after that 10-15 uh, uh, minutes kind of thing. One important thing to remember if you do bottom water quite frequently is to occasionally flush the soil of any salts or minerals. You can see that's what is at the bottom of this terracotta pot. You don't want any of that uh, salt or mineral buildup to remain in the soil. Um, and that is typically what happens if you bottom water often. Um, you have that uh, retention of salt and mineral. So just flush it out and you should be good to go. Okay, I wanna show you right here. I had the water basically at the top level of this saucer. I think it's only been probably about two or three minutes and it's already soaked up um, quite a bit of water so far. And same with this one. You can see the level is a little bit lower. Just going to pull this out of the pot. So I had filled up the uh, container with about an inch of water and the moisture level line you can see is almost maybe an inch and a half. I'm just gonna put that back in, just let that soak up. You can add more water if you want, but uh, you can see the levels are pretty good so far, so just let that soak up. If the plant still looks a bit on the dry side, then you can add more water after that. Okay, I think we're only at probably about five minutes. I just wanna take this uh, sansevieria out of the pot just to see where we're at for moisture. You can see it's probably up to uh, that line so far. I'm gonna let this soak for a bit more. Might add a little bit more soil and I'm kind of losing a bunch, but. You can see that it's evenly moist at the bottom there. So just kind of around the entire plant. Um, I just want to mention that typically you don't like lose this much soil in the uh, saucer. In fact, you know, like you normally don't lose any. Like you can see this one right here, no soil in there. So it's only because I've been taking this uh, sansevieria out of the pot. I'm gonna have to add some more soil, I think, because I lost a bunch in the container. So this is, use your air. This is not what happens when you typically bottom water a houseplant. Okay, so I think it's been probably around 10 minutes, uh, but if I'm being honest, it's probably around six or seven minutes, but I'm just getting impatient. <laughs> That's the bad thing about bottom watering is it takes time. I can already feel that this sansevieria is quite a bit heavier, so I know it's probably watered enough and you can see it's now up to about maybe half of the uh, soil line. So I think that's probably all I'm gonna give this one right here. I'm just gonna set that aside and you can see it has not used up all the water, but I can definitely feel the weight of the pot is uh, as much more than it was when it was really dry. Okay, so for this chia pants, we started off with about an inch of water and you can see it's almost at the halfway level for this one as well. So I'll probably let this one soak up the rest of the water, just like that. Um, let's see how much, there's probably only maybe like a centimeter left at the bottom. It's uh, soaked it up pretty fast. So I'm just gonna let this one finish soaking up the water and then I will uh, basically take it out of the container, find a saucer to set it in and just let it kind of drip dry for a couple minutes and then I'll place it back in its location and again, just pay attention to when it needs water again. So I think that's gonna be pretty much it for this video. I hope I covered all the topics in regards to bottom watering houseplants. If you have any other comments or questions, please leave it down below. I really appreciate the time you guys take to leave me uh, messages and questions and that sort of thing. So I will try and do my best to get to everyone's question, but uh, sometimes it can be a little bit overwhelming as my channel is now, I think, at or close to 40,000 subscribers. So I really appreciate the support. Thanks, take care everyone, bye.